What if I gave you OBS as well as a bunch of other really popular plugins all packaged together in a nice, neat program that not only does all the things OBS does, but also does multi-streaming for free, AV1 encoding. It does everything that you could possibly imagine that you'd need for your stream and even does some other things that I haven't seen before. And I told you it was free. Well. That's exactly what we're talking about today with Prism Live Studio. By the way, this video is sponsored by Prism Live Studio and they're wanting me to show you everything that they have inside this application. I've already messed around with it. We're gonna go live here in just a few minutes with it, but honestly, I'm really impressed with what I see so far. Let me show you. As mentioned, Prism Live Studio is completely free and you can not only get it on Windows, but you can also get it on Apple Silicon for Mac. So if you've got an M1, M2, M3, now just announced, you can also get Prism Lens, which is on Windows and it's coming to Mac, but they also have a mobile app, which we'll be covering in a video just after this one, another one coming up. Make sure you subscribe because their mobile app also does things that a lot of other programs don't do as well. You gotta check it out. So if we go ahead and scroll down the website, you go ahead and see this looks very similar to an OBS, but just a little bit cleaner. And we're gonna go ahead and set up everything from the start. Talk about multi streaming, get everything ready to go. Six max multi streaming opportunities. You can do 4K, stream wherever you want. We're talking about all of that packaged in a free program. Now, let's get into it and let's talk about the program. All right, so here is Prism Live Studio, and all I've done is basically just sit like next, create an account, whatever the case, and opened it up. I haven't done anything other than that, except for connecting my two accounts here. I've got my Twitch as well as my gaming YouTube channel at Dark and Cyrus Gaming. You should go check it out. Anyway, that will be here, and we're going to multi-stream to both here in just a moment, but we're going to set up just some basic things inside this, some scenes, some sources. I'm going to show you how very similar to OBS it is, and then also just kind of build something out really quick, show you some cool features, and we'll go from there. All right, let's talk about all the similarities that are going to be between these programs. Number one, something that a lot of people are going to want in OBS are a lot of the things that you get, like plugins and docs and stuff like that. And as far as I know, you're able to get all of that stuff still inside Prism Live Studio. You're also able to get uh, docs as you're able to do custom browser docs. You can block them, move them around, etc., just like you would inside OBS. They do have a virtual camera and they do have some other tools to be able to connect between automatic scene switcher, Elgato Stream Deck, everything that you, again, normally would expect an OBS is in here because it's built on that source code. A couple of other things that are very similar, you have this scene area, the sources area, the audio mixer, and even the advanced audio properties, all of this should look very familiar. You also have chat. With this one's the one that's a little different. When you connect your actual platforms here, you're actually able to see each individual platform chat to be able to type into them, or you can go ahead and combine them all. And from this, you can actually get a chat source and be able to have something that combines it for you already in here. So those of you who are needing Twitch to be able to combine all your multi-stream chat and everything, this one does it without having to actually leave the platform and get it from somewhere else. This is really cool. So instead of talking about all the stuff that it does similar, let's just build out a stream and you're going to go along that process with me. So let's get started. Number one, we're going to create a couple of different scenes. And what we can see is we have scene collections and untitled. I'm just going to leave it untitled. We're going to go to display method and I'm just going to go to text just so that we can see the titles here. Now, I do love the fact that you can see them as individual scenes and see them operating. That's really cool, but it does use a bunch of resources to do that, but we'll talk about it later. I'm going to create a scene called nested because I like doing a bunch of nested scenes. Talk about that in a minute. We're going to call this one cam. We're going to do one for audio and then we're going to do our main scenes. We'll do a live and we'll do an intermission. We'll make it really simple, nothing over the top. So I'm gonna move all of these that are not nested above and then have the ones that are nested below. The reason I'm doing nested scenes is because if I wanted to do any adjustments either to my audio or to my camera, I can have that retroactively update everywhere at one time by just adjusting the one scene. And I'll show you that in a minute. So what have we got cam here? I'm gonna go ahead and do add. And this is where you're gonna see all of the old stuff that we should know over here at video capture device, game cap, display capture, browser source, images, colors, etc., VLCs. And then you have the new Prism stuff, which is the really cool stuff that we're going to talk about. The lens, the mobile, we'll be using a little bit of that in a moment. The chat, viewer count widgets, some of these stickers, audio visualizers, templates, clocks. This is all free. Let me just reiterate, this is all free. All right, so we're into video capture device, click OK. By the way, the camera you're looking at is the ZVE-10 with a 30 millimeter f1.4 for any of you curious. It's on my Camlink Pro HDMI 4. And as you can see, there's my awesome face. And we're going to leave it right there. Gosh, the blue lights with my blue eyes. 
and that looks really cool guys anyway so this is done i've already added this in and i've gotten an auxiliary device as well as the audio piece here i'm going to mute that just so that my mic doesn't come in from the camera for audio i'm going to go ahead and add an audio input capture which is a mic line and then for me i'm going to call this wave link monitor now those of you who have separate sources like maybe your mic you have something else separated out the reason i put this in an actual dedicated nested scene is so that i can easily add it to any scenes and adjust it sometimes you don't want your mic on every single one it just allows you to split things out but for me, I'm doing Wavelink Stream because I'm using the Elgato Wave software. Now that that's there, you can see not monitor. I'm going to name this Wavelink Stream. Excuse me. All right, we're going to make sure that that's on Wavelink Stream. Yep. And you can go ahead and click filters directly from here. That's cool. So you can do plus everything that you would normally expect, plus VST plugins, compressors, noise gates, regular compressor stuff. Any audio source I do in OBS, I always add a limiter. And I just leave it regular at negative six just so that you don't peak. For whatever reason we click ok and then you see that it pops up here but we'll make some adjustments on this later all right so now that's done i've got a cam and an audio and i'm also going to make one more nested seam we're going to call it display and this is what we're going to use for our display cap uh, so we're going to do display capture. I'm going to click OK. OK. And we're going to make it capture. Uh, I'm not going to do the main monitor because we'll get that weird effect. So I'm just going to capture a different monitor for now. And that's basically it. I've already captured the monitor. Anything that I would normally put over on that screen like here is this. There is that over there on that monitor. Now that we've got our nested scenes set up, now we can build out our actual live scenes and intermission scenes. So under our live scene, we're going to go to sources. We're going to click plus, go to scene, and then click OK. And now it's going to give us a list of all the scenes we have. I'm going to do a display, and that's going to pop up the one behind. And then I'm also going to add my camera. So we're going to do plus, we're going to do scene again, and then... We're going to choose cam. So now I've got my camera here. I can make an adjustment, pull it down. This says all the normal stuff. If you hold alt, you can drag it from the right or left, top to bottom, whenever those, those cases. Shift will allow you to actually deform and undo does work control Z. And then also if you hold control, you'll be able to do full adjustments just like normal. Control allows you to de- uh, whatever it's a D-lock, D-snap, sticky, snappy, I don't know. Right now it's sna like snapping to the bottom of the corner. If I hold control, it allows me to not have that happen. So I'm just gonna leave this in the bottom corner, just fine. And then that's basically the live. We'll go to intermission and we're gonna do the same thing, but this time we're only gonna add our camera because we want just our cam to be there. We're just run intermission scene. Nice, easy, done, clean. All right, let's add a couple of things that are dedicated specifically to this platform. So under sources, we're gonna hit the plus button. And then there's some things over here. We can do an auto visualizer, a clock widget, a music playlist, which you can actually link uh, to either you can do music from Prism or you can do your local stuff. I don't think it links to Spotify or anything like that. Just, just so you know. Viewer count widget. These are really cool. And Prism chat. Let's go ahead and add chat. We'll click OK. And we're going to do style four. And we can put that over here. I'm going to hold alt and I'm just going to shrink it. And so now we've basically got chat being able to scroll in our screen. We'll put it over here right above us. Look at that. All right. There's chat as it goes up. Cool. I've got chat moving. This is all like test chat, by the way. And we'll do a couple more. Let's go ahead and add a clock widget so that we can go ahead and have people know what our time is that we're currently rocking. Let's do this one right here. Unique enough, clean. We'll add it dead center towards the bottom. Actually, we'll put it in the top right corner. Guys, we're, we're doing this all this customization together, by the way. Cool. Got a clock going. And then we'll also add maybe a couple stickers, a viewer count widget. Here we go. We'll click OK. And it actually shows all the ones that are currently connected. So we have templates for each of these. You can just choose them. Really cool. Uh, I really like this one because all of these are cool. I'm going to do this one right here. I'm not sure what some of this is, but we'll just leave these right here. And we got viewer counts that are going to pop up. Easy, neat. I've just designed this. What we don't have is alerts. And so that's the one thing that we're going to have to do is actually go to a platform to get some alerts. So that would be things like stream labs or stream elements. Grab your alerts from there, bring them onto here. For intermission, we're going to do something very similar. We're going to add prism chat. We're going to go ahead and take that. I'll do the same one. We'll put it over here to the corner. We're going to do the same thing with a clock. Uh, we'll do this one again. And I think you can adjust the color on the clock. Put it up in the top right corner. Plus, we're going to do the viewer count widget just like before. Move it to the top top left corner. And we basically built a stream just like that without even leaving Prism. All right, next thing is over here on the right side, we have some tools. If you click this one, this is your virtual camera. This is how you can basically take whatever's on your scene right here. And it can be your camera and something like Discord. 
Discord or recording in Zoom or something like that. You can basically have your preview monitor be a camera source in another platform. So you can be able to do that. You also have Prism Lens, which we'll talk about in a moment, but then you have drawing mode, which is really cool. So for your stream, you can take an opportunity and do this. I've just moved it with my mouse and you can be able to draw on the screen and highlight stuff so you can make some really neat adjustments. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that one. We can draw some really awesome things. Um, uh, uh, maybe I shouldn't draw that. <laughs> Anyway, so you could do some really cool things to be able to kind of show some stuff, maybe doing coaching for esports. This is a really cool thing. You got arrows that you can draw. I think you've got some highlighters, some laser stuff that you can do. There's a highlighter. So really neat. You can change all the colors here at the bottom. You can change how thick or thin the point is, and then you can just hit trash and they go away. Really cool. I love this. Yeah. And so the last one here is you've got prism stickers, Giphy stickers. Uh, and then if, again, if you click those, it's going to pop up a little panel. So here on the side, you have stickers and lenses. So if I can go and click this one, it should pre-populate on the screen and make some kind of stickers and things appear on screen. Really nice, just neat effects. And you can make those stickers appear. You can do the same thing with GIFs. You can do your tracks and then you can do remote control. This would be something you would do with their app. This is a lot to unpack, but if you're getting value from this, please make sure you hit it with a like and then also share it to all your friends so that this video can get as much traction as possible so they can find an awesome free program to do multi-streaming. Speaking of multi-streaming, let me show you that. So at the top, you can see that I've already connected, like I mentioned, my Twitch as well as Dark and Cyrus Gaming, my YouTube channel for gaming. Over here, you can actually add more by clicking this and doing add channels. And you can do Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and then they have some other ones, Neighbor, Band, F Africa. I'm not sure of all of those, but you can do custom RTMPs. They don't support Kick natively. So if you're going to be using Kick, uh, you're not going to be able to get chat to pop into this. Just know that, but there's always the same workarounds in OBS that you can do either way. So, but these platforms, you can update everything within the app without having to go to their dashboards. So if you hover over these and click this little clipboard for Twitch, it'll pop up all of the live settings that you would normally see from the actual Twitch clipboard and dashboard. And same thing for YouTube. You're able to do all your new podcasts, what your latency is, is it made for kids, your description, you're able to do your thumbnail. And something really cool is you can actually take the photo from here for your thumbnail. So I could literally just say, what's my thumbnail? And like that could be my thumbnail for the stream, which is exactly what I'm going to do. <laughs> We're going to leave it just like that. But anyway, we could do new podcast or if we've got something already pre-planned, we can use that as well. And any of the other platforms that connect, you're going to get the same kind of situation. On chat over here, you've got it to where you can do all Twitch native actual chat where you can type as a broadcaster or activate any of your channel points. And then you're also to see your live YouTube chat to do top chat in all time. Any of those things, you can detach it so that you can move it to another screen or you can continue to leave it here in dock. And also everything in here is the same thing. You can detach these, move them around, readjust. You're not locked in to where everything is natively. Now, let's get into the settings. Let me show you a couple of interesting things and a couple of things that uh, are kind of weird, but also really good. All right, so what we have right here is under general, very similar stuff. Hide prism from screen capture, which is really nice. Snap sensitivity. It's, everything here is what you would normally expect. Preview, multi-view, uh, depending on how deep or in-depth your stream is, some of this stuff could be really useful for uh, basically multi-view stuff. For display method, this is the really cool one where you can actually hit real time and you can see down here in the scenes, every one of my scenes is actively monitoring down there, which I think is so cool right? But you're basically having to encode all of those down there. So you can actually set it to thumbnail. And if you click apply, it'll every five seconds basically update with what that thumbnail would look like so that you know your scene is going to be what it's going to be. Or you can do what the normal piece is and just show text and it'll be just like normal OBS. All right, then you've got regular studio mode, just like normal. Output is where things honestly get a little interesting. So you have output mode is simple, and this is everything you would normally expect. Like what is your bit rate, audio bit rate, your encoder, your presets, anything like that, right? And the same thing for recording, and they have replay buffer. But if you change it to advanced, this all looks, again, very similar to what you would see inside OBS, except there's a couple of weird tweaks here in Prism. I'm going to leave this in here for you guys to be able to see it as well. You need to add 
AV1 encoding to every single option if you have an NVENC. But Prism, I'm going to actually leave this in so you can see this as well, but everyone needs to know this. You need to make it to where AV1 is available everywhere, not just in one specific mode. And I'm talking about from NVIDIA RTX 4080 to use AV1 encoding. I can't do it based upon specific settings that I do. So what I do in here is if I'm under streaming and I go to encoder, if I click this under advanced mode, it only has H.264, which is just regular NVENC, and then HEVC, which is H.265. I can't choose AV1 if I'm under advanced, but if I'm under simple, I can choose AV1. So I think this is one of those things that this will probably be fixed in a future piece. I don't think there's a problem here, but this is just one of those. For today, we're probably still going to be using H.264 because I am multi-streaming to more than one platform, and because of that, only YouTube supports AV1. And I haven't found a way to actually send a different encoder to one location and a different encoder to another location. It's just pick one and go. So we're still going to use H.264, which is just in bank for the people who need to know. Or if you want to, you could just use software and do X.264. X if you're an AMD person or you're using an, an Intel card, obviously it's going to say something different. I have NVIDIA, so this is what it says. So for us and for what we're doing, I'm just going to go ahead and change this to advanced. I'm going to set my encoder to H.264. We're going to go bit rate. I'm going to go 6,000. We're going to go keyframe interval of two, quality of a best quality two passes, quarter res, and then we're gonna leave the rest of this fine. High quality, high, psychovisual tuning is fine, GPU zero, max B frames two, this is perfect. And then for audio, because I'm streaming to YouTube, they only support 160 for audio bitrate. We're gonna leave it there. But if you're doing Twitch, and you're not doing the VOD track, you could do audio bitrate of 320 and get better audio. So we're gonna leave this at 160. Now we're gonna go down to audio. I'm gonna disable all of the audios because I've actually chosen them down in the audio nested scene. Now we're going to go to video. Right now we're at base canvas 1080, output scaled 720. We're going to go 1080 stream, 1080p streams and we're actually going to stream at 59.94. Some of you are going to be like, but Brandon, why don't you just stream 60 frames per second? Uh, because these cameras, like this one, uh, it says 60 FPS, but it's at 59.94. Long story, you can go look up a bunch of stuff with that, but basically cameras like this do 29.99. 9.7 or 59.94. They shaved off a 0.01% piece there or something, something of that effect. There's a whole bunch of stuff to go into, but way too technical for this video. Everything else feels pretty normal. Uh, I'm not going to change anything here. I'm just going to click apply. We're going to click OK. And this stream is technically ready to go, except I need to add my audio. I just noticed my audio scene here. So we're going to go to add scene. We're going to click audio. Click OK. We're going to do the same thing here, add scene audio and click OK. And now I've got my Wavelink stream here and everything is ready to go. I'm ready to go live. We've basically set up this entire piece for us to go live today. So we're going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and go live for just a few minutes. All right, I think we're actually live. We're going to type, oh, hi. We're going to see what's going to happen. It pops up on YouTube. Oh, that's cool. So hello, everyone. How's it going? Hello, friends. Hopefully people are here to watch. What's up, Watcher? How's it going? We're watching, uh, we're, we're doing a brand new app today and I'm um, doing just doing a test stream for video. So anyone who types right now is going to be a part of that video. Really cool app. This is honestly blowing me away. I'm pretty sure that this might, this might replace my OBS. If I'm being 100% honest, it was so easy to set up. It was easy to navigate. It was able to just honestly, like this is clean. So this is the, let me show you this while you're here, guys. I'm going to show you this. I have to change to a scene. You're going to lose me for a second. All right. So yeah, so this is this application, by the way. This is called Prism Live Studio. It is an OBS replacement that is ridiculous. I'm not live on kick right now, but let me just tell you, Prism Live Studio, six channels of multi-streaming, okay? Stream Deck support. You're able to actually do this watch natively. Did y'all see that? Did, did y'all see the high I just wrote on screen? Right? Are y'all seeing this? I'm just drawing on screen. Are y'all seeing this on screen right now? So all of this is native. This, this program runs just as light as OBS. I have the only thing that you would actually have to leave this platform to go grab is alerts, chat box, 
all of this stuff, I'm able to actually pop up little like emojis and stuff on the screen directly from this, which is so cool. I can't understate how neat this is. It's showing over here. You can see like here's the multiple chat. You can also go to your normal Twitch chat to do all of your basic stuff. Here's YouTube chat. You can actually adjust it from top chat to live chat. But there's something else that's really cool. And I'm going to show this for basically this is going to be in the video. So guys, if you guys are here. All right, we're going to go over here to intermission and on the phone, they actually have an app, which we're gonna be covering the app as well. But Prism Live, which is this app right here, really cool. Like we're talking, we're about, talking about like, like just, just easy, easy adjustments. adjustments. Nothing, Nothing crazy. crazy. Audio overlap, Audio can you mute? Oh, 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 my bad. Yep, I'm so glad that you said something. Yeah, it's muted now. Thank you for saying that, yeah. So it also pulls on the audio, obviously. You get full control of all of your cameras. So if I switch to rear, there's that, right? I even get my 0.5 camera. I even get my zoomed camera, everything. Control of all of my cameras. Great options for new streamers who haven't gotten a PC cam yet. Yeah, I mean, and it's, again, it's all built in, done. It's called Prism Live Studio. Let me pull this back up. Called Prism Live Studio. This video I will release sometime probably later this week um but this is they they're sponsoring this video for me to talk about it but the truth is if i had known it existed i probably would have done this video uh but this is ridiculous prism live studio i i think that this has everything that anyone would ever need as a streamer built in already no crazy setup it does everything like you normally would so like here's my camera right I can go in here just like what you would like burn when you use green screen, just like normal. It's literally the exact same thing as OBS, all of the same settings. You can still do chroma key. You can still do every, it, this is literally OBS that they've used the source code and licensed it and then stuck all this cool prism stuff in it as well. It's the exact same thing with some new cool stuff. Like I love this. If I was reviewing channels, like I could be able to say like this right here, you could work on this, right? It's so cool. This is probably in between ease of Twitch studio difficulty of OBS I think this fits right in the middle but you get all of the normal ways to improve and add on to OBS but with all of the normal things of OBS as well with all of the stuff they've added it's just so cool look look how cool this is and that's that's just done you can get all of your all of your text templates everything you could possibly imagine all your social stuff look at all these look at that Redone. You don't even have to leave the platform. Lower thirds that pop up on two lines for captions. You can do stickers like Dark and Cyrus Gaming, like and subscribe. Look at all this stuff that you can do. And then you can just do regular titles like normal things. Guys, this is pre, you're talking about a full production software without having to leave anything. This is stuff that you would have to pay for. Here's the truth. I wasn't lying during that live stream. There are a lot of things that Prism Live Studio does that I already add in as plugins to OBS. And sure, that functionality is there and I could do bare bones OBS and have a really light running recording and encoding software. But the truth is from my perspective, six places to multi-stream for free and having combined chat, all of these stickers and all of these like extra things that make it feel like a, a bigger production piece, drawing on the screen, being able to pop up stickers on whenever you want, however you want, it being fully integrated with the stream deck. And I'm curious how crazy you can go with streamer bot and this platform, if you can get WebSocket and all of that connected. I'm sure that all that's taken care of. The only thing I have a gripe with is the fact that on advanced settings, you can't do AV1 to be able to do your encoder or NVENC. I'm sure that will be fixed in the future. And my other thing that I would say needs to be kind of added and adjusted is in the new OBS 30, you can actually do a full length chat box from top to bottom, especially for people who do vertical monitors. Really nice to be able to have that as a dockable window inside the platform to go all vertical. And I'll show a picture of what it looks like right here, just so that you can kind of have an idea of what I'm talking about. That's in the new OBS. I would love to see that feature of a full height dock inside this as well. I haven't been able to figure out how to do it. I'm pretty sure it's just because they're not on the latest source code of OBS. Anyway, all of that out of the way, I'm really impressed. Let me know down in the comments what you think. Free, free guys, multi-streaming, connection with your phone. My last piece to say about this is, if you're a person looking and you're a streamer and you're already using OBS or you're already using Streamlabs and you're wanting one platform that does it all, that's clean, has multi-streaming and combines the chats, has all of these other cool features that you normally have to have for plugins, this is a software that you need to look at. It's free. 
free. And we're gonna be taking a look at the mobile app version of this in a video here in a couple days. You have to take a look at it. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much. If you did, please make sure you hit it with a like. Maybe even consider subscribing so you don't miss the mobile app version of this. Those of you IRL streamers, beautiful. I've already messed with it. It's absolutely amazing. You have to check it out as well. Anyway, check out one of these two videos right here on the screen. I'm sure you'll love them. One of them is an audio mixer that actually has chat built into it. Also really cool. You should check it out. We'll see you over in those videos. Thanks, guys.